today's guest is Anastasia Kobakina. I'm so happy, Anastasia, that you accepted my invitation to talk. You are playing such an important role in today's cello society, trying to help us catching up with uh, the violins who are still quite a few decades ahead of us. Um, <laughs> how are you doing and where are you spending these uh, corona times? I'm spending my corona times in uh, Switzerland and uh, I just couldn't come back to uh, to Paris where I'm living but I'm actually not so, so sad about it because <laughs> my apartment is so small and uh, I think Paris is uh, slightly depressing these days but uh, yeah I mean how I'm doing it I think it is uh, everybody very different uh, every day it's you know the days are quite similar to Shaza, but the uh, motivation is like just going like this. <laughs> when was your last concert? Like, how did you arrive to Switzerland? My concert was, I think, um, eight, eight, 8 of March uh, yeah. in, in France. But then I was planning to spend uh, four days of vacation here in, uh, in, <laughs> in Geneva and then. Uh, yeah, I kind of, you know. It's now um, four months yeah. of vacation. <laughs> four, four months vacation, yeah. <laughs> right at the beginning of the quarantine, uh, you wrote me that you want to improve your technique. Uh, <laughs> how is that going? What, what's your <laughs> corona project? Well, you know, I, I'm on constant search of inspiration on this topic. First week I was a bit like a slot, you know, not moving. And then second week I decided, um, well, such an opportunity to finally. <laughs> and then, you know, I uh, printed out all 40 uh, popper, 12 piazzi, <laughs> Offenbach concerto. Wow. You know, like, wow. <laughs> but, like, I'm gonna there. <laughs> well, after three days I was much calmer. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last time we met, we actually uh, played a piece by your father. Yes, I love that because I remember you, you, you said a joke just uh, like two seconds before we played on stage, like uh, um, uh, uh, the horse riders, that's the name of the piece. And, and, and then and you said like, it's a big question, who is a horse and who is a rider? My grandfather was a composer, so I wanted to ask you, how is it uh, to have a composer in your family? Well, I think I uh, appreciate it now much more than I did when I was a kid, mm. you know, because uh, well, it's quite normal thing that somebody in the um, next room to you uh, composing something and like, yeah, he's writing opera, you know, <laughs> usual thing. <laughs> Uh, but then, you know, now I um, I like so much the fact that I can always uh, ask he, his opinion also on other pieces because uh, his view is so much different from from mine. I I mean, I never wrote a piece and uh, I don't think that I have um, a gift for that. And um, never say I, never. <laughs> well. Yeah, I think it, 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 one has to feel just need of, you know, of uh, creating something uh, like, you know, their hunger of, uh, of doing this. And mm. um, I, I somehow I, I didn't feel it. And um, of course I tried, but, you know, when you're just uh, pretending it's nothing <laughs> special. So maybe the next time we play, uh, you will play a piece by my grandfather. Uh. <laughs> yeah. You should send me, you know, because I, I have to say that now because, you know, this will uh, increase my motivation. I'm uh, thinking of recording some um, contemporary music, like, yes, you know, great. music of my father and uh, um, other French composers, which I was supposed to play this summer, but I didn't hmm. want to play. Again. So send me, please, if there is something for cello solo, or even for, for cello and piano. Yes, um, there is a sonatina for um, cello and piano, which he composed for my parents. And um, there is a solo suite, uh, which is super, super challenging. So hard. So if you need a okay. challenge, uh, okay. I, can, I can recommend. He um, died when I was quite young. 
I would love to hear now his opinion about other pieces and, and how he thinks, you know? It, it would be so, so incredible to hear. I, I also grew up in an environment where it was natural to, to play contemporary music. I mean, it was not something... It wasn't contemporary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was just music as, as every other music. Um, well, it actually is, no? I mean, I was I was listening yes. yesterday the 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 interview of uh, Kopachinska, and then she was asked, "What is the difference between uh, uh, baroque music and modern music?" And she says, "It's all music." And it's actually <laughs> right. It's all music, and uh, we we shouldn't treat it as. Uh, uh, I think baroque music more. You have to be, of course. You, it would be nice if you read all the, you know, Quellen about how to to play yeah. it, but it still says. Um, something that is uh, fragile, something lively, you know, the music is... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I had a, an amazing uh, chamber music teacher uh, in Budapest. Uh, I'm not sure if you met her, uh, Rita Wagner. Um, no, I, met, I, I didn't talk, never, never talked to her, but I listened to master classes in Prashakor. Yes, and, and I mean, she's uh, amazing and, and uh, Radosh, of course. Um, it's too, and I think they, they really taught me um, that the musical relations, uh, the gravity in music, the physics in music is, is everywhere the same. Uh, the same uh, kind of rules uh, as gravity on earth applies to Baroque music as well as contemporary. So um, we just need to find those relations between the notes and then it's just music. I will definitely send uh, a few pieces from my grandfather if, if you are interested. I would be very happy. Yes, very much. <laughs> no, seriously, because um, so the Sonatina and the solo suite he wrote for my father. So it was also an in interesting to for him to see like how I played. Like I want to see yes. other cellists. Next generation. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about next generation, you became a next generation artist at uh, BBC Three Radio, which means a lot of work in the studio, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about this. <laughs> well, it's very challenging and uh, somehow I never felt I was ready enough. <laughs> mm. I didn't figure out for myself yet how to prepare because it's a different way of um, performing then, for example, concert, yeah? When you go to the room uh, of uh, the sound engineer and you put the headphones and, the, you know, it's only you uh, and the score. And, uh, and if sometimes you're surprised about how you do this or surprised why why did I do this? Because it didn't sound it like this uh, uh, when I played. very much this process, but it's very exhausting for me. Mm. Because I also, uh, you know, in this very moment, uh, you're not, I'm not necessarily liking my playing and you have to somehow overcome this feeling and uh, uh, yeah, push yourself to, to the limits. Yeah, you have at this very moment, you know, I feel about my technique, my playing very different uh, every day. You know, sometimes I'm more self-conscious, sometimes less and uh, this very much affects, uh, I, I don't think that it affects very much my performance, but, but it's, it's your uh, feeling. My rela yeah. feeling and re relation to, to the cello. And so, you know, there are some days where I feel like, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> and the days where I feel like everything is out of tune. <laughs> I mean, I do agree that uh, studio work um, makes you feel very vulnerable. But I love it uh, because it, this is kind of Hungarian <laughs> thing, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> to say that. <laughs> no, because it takes so much strength to be vulnerable. Yeah. And I think it's a very honest process. You have to be 100, over 100% 100 uh, honest with yourself. And, and I'm guessing also to, to record for the BBC, you are challenged also with works which are not necessarily um, basic repertoire. You need to, uh, you needed to record pieces which uh, might be, you know, even um, world premiere recording. No one ever recorded it before. 
Yeah, it's partly yes. I mean, they are also welcome in the standard repertoire very much because, you know, I think the uh, audience of uh, every classical radio still <laughs> likes to, to, to hear the, the classics. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, um, I don't know. I find it easier to perform the modern music <laughs> for me. I don't know. I. I feel like uh, you know, um, there is no limits. At least, Wait, I mean, uh, uh, just just to clarify, uh, modern music. What what do you understand uh, under modern, modern music? Is, uh, written nowadays. Okay. Written by living composers. Okay. Or those who passed away not well, recently. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm not speaking of Shostakovich or Shostakovich. Yes, yes, yes. Or, That's uh, already uh, classic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I feel freer. Maybe maybe not a big difference, but still there is a different uh, feeling about uh, playing the, the contemporary music. Uh, how about you? Well, I I also very much uh, love to perform um, contemporary music and to work with living composers. So um, just. Uh, about now two years ago, I started uh, working quite regularly with uh, Kurtag and um, with uh, Peter Oefers. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, this, is, this is another level. Uh, I think it's it's. <laughs> I recorded uh, last year um, a program for a CD. Um, I'm really sad because um, because this coronavirus happened and uh, the release is now postponed. It should have uh, um, appeared uh, in June, uh, so we postponed it to September. Uh, but uh, okay. that contains also, um, actually, uh, it's going to be a world premiere recording of one of uh, newer Kurtak pieces. Um, wow. And yes, and while I was uh, recording a piece by uh, Mr. Utwesh, he also came to the studio. I was mm -hmm. so lucky to adjust our schedules and uh, he, he was present when, when I recorded it. And it was so fascinating how a composer is listening uh, from the outside and also um, adjust to the personality of uh, certain performers. Do you feel the same way with pieces which are not necessarily written today, but pieces which um, were forgotten or uh, they were even uh, maybe forbidden to play a few yeah, decades exactly. ago. I, um, think, I think it's also similar feeling somehow uh, because I mean if we cannot ex escape from all this uh, listening experience uh, of uh, yeah uh, of the prototypes, how it should be, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and they're of, often uh, uh, the iconic recordi recordings, and then you listen, you know, like, you know, like you know, Schubert exponed by Horowitz played, and then you listen all the, and at cer certain place he is, you know, voicing, uh, I don't know, the middle voice, and then you listen to all the recordings of other pianists, and they all do this at the very same place and you know this is this is the very same thing uh, happens also with Cherisp uh, um, there are some places where Rostropovich played uh, I don't know fourth instead of piano or, uh, or some uh, you know some ritardando and then uh, we all do this <laughs> even unconsciously um, unconsciously yeah. Yeah, it's, it's 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 nothing against nature no it it sounds very natural so we uh, sometimes without um, um, advice into the score and look into the score we are just doing it by because we already got used to it before learning the piece yeah i mean the, the best examples uh, coming to mind is a dvorak cello concerto i mean it's just so it's much true. tradition <laughs> weighing on that piece um or also the algar concerto i mean uh when people yeah. try to imitate right. the exact same slides as uh, dupre uh, used to do it um, yeah, I, I absolutely <laughs> understand uh, what you mean. I saw also that you recorded a piece by a female composer, Kasperova. Kasperova, yes. Yes. If she was a teacher of Stravinsky. Yeah, and, incredible. Uh, 
well, according to the score, what the, the pianist told me that it's insanely difficult. He was a great pianist. So, uh, I mean, they're, they're, it's full of, uh, you know, like uh, almost unplayable things, you know, like, I don't know, uh, 12 bars of only octaves, you know, and then jumps in the left hand, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. But probably, probably at that time, they just had, you know, like us nowadays, uh, just uh, unlimited almost time for, for practicing. And then they didn't have this, you know, this kind of destructive things. <laughs> BBC has this mission, you know, um, this project of uh, um, drawing attention to female composers. I think it's so yes. important. They also. Uh, yeah, I actually played uh, for them also a concert a few years ago, and um, that's when I discovered um, also a Croatian uh, female composer who was born in Budapest. Uh, she has the most amazing uh, life story. Her name is uh, Dora Pejacevic. When they first asked me to play this concert, they also required uh, that I include a piece by a female composer. Mm -hmm. And they sent me a kind of list, uh, like we thought of these composers. And so mm -hmm. I, I really dig in and, and uh, did a bit of research. And somehow I didn't like what they suggested, so I, <laughs> I, I tried to do my own research, and uh, that's when when I found her. And I really think it's it's everything you want to include in a cello sonata. I think it's a it's a great piece. Um, you have, have you played the trio by uh, Fanny Mendelssohn, for instance, the piano trio? No, I I didn't play. No. Or uh, Clara Schumann, something from Clara. Clara I played the other trio. I mean, uh, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm absolutely for that, and I think it's incredible that nowadays it's changing. It should have been done. I think, well, it should have been done, and then it's now uh, it's still on the moment of changing. But also, it's a question: uh, Are we playing these composers because they are females, or because the pieces are good? Yeah. And you know, this is also. A turning point because there are, uh, for every human it's normal to 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 produce great pieces of music and not so great ones and uh, we can apply to any this rule to any composer and then yeah. you know when uh, um, when we start to you know desperately search for female composers then we take everything in you know and then we name something what is not necessary an incredible piece of music we be presented as it would be uh, something mm. you know discovery of the most amazing piece and I, I think we should be still careful with this uh, topic keeping the line of uh, the quality what is uh, musical quality is of course it's also very discussable question what is quality is <laughs> of course and who is everybody, judging everybody is different yeah. so many people uh, then say you know certain uh, female conductors uh, got a new job or got uh, appointed in, in important positions and then they say oh she just got it because now it's a trend of um, of, of supporting women I, I so disagree with this I mean I think they they very much the, the ones I know very much deserve uh, this position and I think it's also fine after all these decade yeah. to now maybe have you know a certain phase where this balance in this uh, because yeah. it was for centuries it was uh, you know the uh, male would would become uh, was, would get the certain positions because they were male and uh, you know and there was not possible possibility for, for women you know to have and of course at the moment when something is changing and something that profound uh, is changing there there is a danger of this balance and you know yeah. like you know changing is another uh, it just one has to you know uh, live through this and uh, wait for the moment when they i think uh, i hope we've arrived to the moment where then there would be no definition for you know women or men you know like no there just would be speaking of human of the artist of uh, i don't know of performer you know not applying the you know the female or male uh, qualities of right. course they, but of course they exist they exist in nature of, i think yeah there there are certain 
things that we uh, classify more male or female. So. And you were born in uh, Yekaterinburg, and then you um, you moved to Moscow. You lived in Kronberg. You moved to Berlin. You are now in Paris. Of course, we all travel a lot. Well, normally, not now, but living, like deciding to live in a city is, is very different from traveling. So um, how, how was that for you? Or do you see yourself uh, to live in Paris now for the next few years? I like it very much, I must say, um, because it's very interesting to compare the, the cultures, the, the, you know, I mean, we, we can, uh, again, we, you know, human is so much made to classify things, you know, this is this, this is this. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but still, you know, there are some things that uh, um, correspond with certain, you know, um, how is it, myths or um, qualities of the people. You know, the little things, you know, in France being late, it's absolutely normal. And in Germany, if you're late, it's something that, what has happened? <laughs> Everything is fine. <laughs> yes. You know, also the way of uh, um, reflecting to the life, you know, I find the French people have uh, uh, so much uh, lighter, you know, uh, more relaxed. Uh, I think in certain period of time, it's nice to live in one place and then why not change it? Why, why, why one has to be attached to something? And it's nice to switch. Okay, wow. I, I uh, think I can adjust very quickly to new people and new circumstances. Um, but there are certain things like I need, you know, uh, something which is sure or something which I can count on, uh, something which is, uh, yeah, a base um, for me. What do you think of live streams or, or this state of, of uh, what we are living now through as, as musicians? We are talking about live streams nowadays, yeah. Yes. Because, I mean, there are there are concert live streams, and uh, I'm currently enjoying so much the digital concert hall of Berlin. <laughs> and I think, you know, right. while, while watching it, and I'm like, the first thing I will do after the quarantine, I will go to Berlin to the concert. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's also a personal choice for everybody. And uh, I decided for myself not to do it. For, for certain points, first of all, quality. I don't have um, possibility to arrange the good quality live stream. And uh, mm. I find it not uh, so much uh, powerful to, to make a, a broadcast, you know, with a low quality. Because uh, still we are talking about art and, you know, you can... I mean, of course, you can look at the, the reproduction of the Monet. You will never get uh, this uh, feeling from the printed, you know. Yeah. And, you know, there are also very different qualities of printing. And I think uh, we have, uh, with museums, it's different, of course, yeah. Uh, but uh, with music, we have plenty of recordings. And, uh, of course, I miss concerts. But, you know, for mm. me... Uh, Concerts, it's something that uh, you have to be rich inside. You have to feel the need to share. And, uh, you know, in this past two months, what I uh, spent, I feel uh, I could play, you know, but uh, maybe I'm not fully uh, recharged. I fully, you know, fulfilled mm -hmm. with, uh, with everything. And, you know, I, I take this time also as a time to reflect, to... Uh, to read, you know, to to listen to music quietly, you know, it, sometimes you have two weeks break and then you have uh, every day, you know, yeah. crazy traveling and, you know, uh, for myself, I very rarely I say no for the concert uh, because um, I don't think I'm at the, that stage of career of saying, no, I won't come, you know, <laughs> I like doing it, but there's kind of, you know, in this, uh, habit of doing things you know um, a bit more maybe automatically because you know you then you're you're prepare yourself for the concert but you're not prepare it in a way that i would prepare myself now to practice this 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 is this and you know and you, then you travel then you have to organize this and this and then you just you know i'm going and uh, 
at the next concert, different program. Again, you know, you're trying to, to put all your concentration to learn this piece or to refresh this piece. And then it's still, you know, uh, it's after a certain period of time, you, you get a bit empty here. Mm. Uh, I don't know, also physically. And uh, maybe that's what uh, I was experiencing also um, the last months. And so I, I'm quite... Uh, grateful for this opportunity i mean it's also very different i find um touring in a way that you know you are every day in a, another city and you play the same pieces like until now i i got so many different projects and it was sometimes very tough in schedule but it was different programs different mindsets chamber music solo with orchestra I find it's very different when you have same program and you have to play like 14 concerts in 16 days when you have to, yeah, keep, um, keep your thoughts fresh and your approach fresh. So it's not becoming an automatism. That's, uh, that's really the worst. I mean, you clearly experience this also as well. What, what is easier for you to, to have the same program and uh, play a uh, number of concerts, uh, one after the other, or um, to actually try to manage a big bunch of repertoire. I think everything has a certain uh, uh, details, you know, like, uh, I mean, for, for, for me to play, uh, for example, in the quartet, it's completely different uh, mindset, you know, or playing like uh, in the orchestra, um, also different mindset. And, you know, also for, for, for playing, uh, as you said, 14 concerts in a row with, with the same piece. I never did that, but uh, in, with uh, smaller formats. Uh, it's also different uh, mindset because then you have more, I think, work uh, not with your technical things. I mean, of course, uh, you know, like uh, cleaning yourself after yesterday performance to need it. And, uh, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> um, but then it's, it's a work with your... I don't know, with your psycho, you know, if, if you perform it with an orchestra, uh, it's also very different because, uh, I mean, uh, uh, first two concerts, you're still excited, you know, you, you don't know each other so well. And Third, fourth concert, and then you know that uh, there's still, you know, six and seven going, so you're thinking, oh, everything's fine, yeah, you, 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 you know how it works already, and then you try to walk the same path, and then you realize, oh, after after certain time, oh, so boring. I've played it already. I know what is going on. What what should I do? How how I shake, uh, you know, this uh, situation, and how I try to shake also, you know, the people around me that they, there is time finally energy coming out, and uh, well, it's every time uh, different. And uh, I I didn't find yet a recipe, you know, for this. I think there is one recipe and uh, what you said also earlier that you feel every day different with your instrument. I think it's, um, yeah. it's something actually everyone kind of should accept. It's like uh, with your body, uh, you feel every day different. There is not going to be a day where uh, everything is the same as yesterday. Uh, actually, I have to say uh, yoga helped me so much because it uh, it helped me to to really accept that today is today and um, maybe i feel uh, different now in in my legs or in my arm or just uh, you know my head and and it's fine i i will work this with this today um do you do any uh, anything to to balance out the intense touring life and and cello playing it's like a bit like with a with a pop parachute, you know. <laughs> there are some moments when I start to, you know, to push myself to do it, and then I stop. <laughs> yeah, I did also yoga, and I found it very useful to to finally feel your, actually your yeah. feet, for example. You know, like yeah. after doing some exercises, I was practicing and finally realized, wow, I can I can feel how I placed my feet, <laughs> my feet on the on the ground, yeah. and it's. Uh, certainly helpful past week i was doing everyday sports you know like i thought I, this also will kick my uh, kick me to you know to do more things on day on during the day than usually right. yeah maybe i'll come back to yoga because <laughs> i i saw a um, short clip uh, of you backstage and i think i caught you I did this. doing a breathing exercise 
yeah, so it this made is, me this immediately is. think because I do that also quite often and yeah. people sometimes looking at me like she's crazy right. what's going on <laughs> like, um, and I was so happy I'm but not alone helps. yeah this I, helps I really so like, much because this uh, like before going on stage I have a crazy beat and then then you know like also I feel I feel at the very moment that I'm so stressed and this kind of exercise helps me to push this level a bit down yeah so yeah. I'm happy we are doing it yeah next time we play together uh, whatever piece uh, we have a course <laughs> <laughs> no, do you have any questions or, or topics you, you want to share um, please please share more of Prokofiev uh, <laughs> It inspires me so much. <laughs> what keeps you going for the next month? Well, it, it, first of all, it, different things inspire me every day. And, you know, I'm, I'm also searching for it. It could be recording. It could be uh, my friends doing sports and books also. Anything, you know. I really love movies. So I was also uh, starting to watch, uh, for instance, Fellini movies. Because I thought uh, I, I should catch up on my cinematography uh, uh, culture. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's also not something I can watch every day. So I think it's normal that, you know, as you said, there are uh, different phases of, of this uh, quarantine. I never had the time to, to, uh, to read enough. Uh, and then, you know, now when I have time, uh, I also don't read uh, more. And it's probably not... a uh, a question of time but a habit well if, if you ask about something kind of a hobby project i'm doing now the um, i want i would like to be a, a guide for st petersburg because i love so much this city so next time amazing come, i hope i'm Great. ready it's so, oh. it's so amazing yeah. there are so many uh, little projects in my inside my mind you know like I, I would love to improve my technique i would love to improve my uh back holding i don't know uh, um, yeah <laughs> <Just> <laughs> uh, i would love to play better on piano you know um i don't know i should i should i should finally learn japanese you know and then i'm buying books you know and doing it uh, or no i don't like this i would like to to start medicine and then i'm searching the whole day how to get a medicine a medical degree because you know this profession will be obvious uh, me this <laughs> I like playing cello. I do it every day, but it's uh, for my pleasure now. Even if I, you know, side read the piece, uh, um, you know, very, you know, slow, not necessarily very beautiful. I know how it sounds in my head, and I know that uh, how it how it should sound. But mm -hmm. you know, I don't have a need to prepare it for the stage performance. So I'm, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, repeating one passage. For, to to get it secure and uh, because i don't have this need i uh, uh, which i always uh, had during the the past uh, years would say yeah mm. i uh, i i finally come to this those things that i always wanted to try wanted to do uh, it's funny that you say medicine because um just yesterday i saw a video uh, made by kavakos he was uh, giving a tribute uh, to Fritz Chrysler and mm -hmm. um, he mentioned that uh, he was also studying medicine. I find it also interesting to to discover uh, these composers or performers who had lived through um, war times, even served in war, or actually had an experience with a pandemic situation such as the Spanish flu. I find that very inspiring uh, to see how, how these people dealt with it because for us it's clearly something shockingly new um yeah we came from a very extreme lifestyle to this and and no one ever experienced uh something like this before. it's a strange time definitely one has to find uh, uh adapt to live in this time but i think human is so much flexible and uh, made to adapt to the situation, so uh, we will find a way out of it. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, uh, then let's finish on this positive note. Uh, I really I'm hope... so glad to see you. Yeah, it's, it's also nice. 
uh, to see people and see how you, th you think and, and what you do. And I really hope that we can play a concert soon together. Um, of course, and, and send me the score. Yeah, I will, I will. Thanks so much uh, for yeah, talking to me to and you. stay healthy. All the best. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. See you. Bye.